Hi guys, welcome back to Red Dot Gaming, where today we are doing a ranking video once again with the top five unit rosters in Rome Total War and Rome Total War Remastered. Of course, this is the non-Roman unit rosters, so of course the Romans would have the strongest unit rosters most definitely. But we're going for the non-Romans, of course, because we don't want to include the Romans in this. Everyone knows the Romans are the strongest. So let's look at some other unit rosters. And we are going to go comprehensively on a custom battle through each of the unit rosters. So it's going to be a bit of a longer video. But of course, do stay tuned. There's going to be plenty of good information in there for you. And we're going to be going through all of these unit rosters comprehensively. Now, the parameters for this, guys... Uh, we want to talk about diversity in the unit roster. So how rounded that faction is. Do they have a good infantry, cavalry and archer mix as well as a bit of artillery? Um, the strength of the unit roster, of course, is a big, big part of this. How strong those units are in the roster and whether they have any OP units. I haven't really overcompensated for horse archers in this. So in fact, there is only one uh, one unit roster in this that has horse archers in. You can kind of try and guess that if you would like. Uh, but that's because otherwise it would just be a unit roster of every faction that has <laughs> horse archers in. Because of course horse archers are the most OP units in the game. And you can check my video, uh, video out as to why in the description down below. Now let's get into the video. Now let's talk about our two bonus mentions, guys, and to why they are not in the top five. Of course, these two bonus mentions are Macedon and Greece. Now, Greece definitely have the strongest hoplite unit in the game, and armored hoplites are one of the most under underappreciated, underrated units in the game as well. But the reason why we don't want have Greece in the top five is they have pretty average cavalry. The only good cavalry they have is their general's bodyguard. But the Greek cavalry are pretty trash. Um, so you are not going to have great cavalry options playing as Greece. And when you're playing a phalanx nation, you need good cavalry options. And then the reason why we don't have Macedon is they have the opposite. They have brilliant cavalry options. But their pikemen are not brilliant. The royal pikemen are the best ones that they can get. And again, they're pretty decent. But the phalanx pikemen, look, for, for morale... And the Royal Pikemen only 8 morale, so they are not exactly the strongest phalanx sort of uh, nations in the uh, in the game. So that is why they have that bonus mention. They are lacking in one sort of area. But of course, they are both very strong unit rosters. So don't think I've ignored them as your favourite factions for no reason. Now, let's get into number 5. Here we are with number five, guys, and it is a bit of a rogue choice. I always like to put a bit of a controversial choice in these lists, as you guys know, and we are going with Armenia. Now, there's a very good reason for this, and it might be right in front of you right now, but we'll come to that soon. So the thing with Armenia overall is they have pretty decent infantry for an Eastern faction. A lot of Eastern factions do not have the best infantry. Uh, they have some standard archers, but they have very strong cavalry, and we're going to talk about that soon. So let's go through this unit roster. We'll start with the trash units. This is the trash tier that we like to talk about. So, of course, peasants, just the standard peasants. And then we have the hillmen, 4 morale, 5 melee attack, 9 defense. Not brilliant, but not too bad. And, of course, we have the eastern infantry with 10 defense, 3 melee, and 2 morale. These guys will rout at the sound of the wind going past their ears. Do not use these guys if you ever get the chance. They are awful, guys. Really, really, really bad. But let's talk about their decent infantry they, that they have. And of course, they have the heavy spearmen that can do phalanx formation. They don't have long spears, as you can see, which is a bit of a problem when they come up against other phalanxes that will have long spears. But they are a very solid, decent heavy spear spear unit with 17 defense, good armor, good defense skill and good shield. With an alt attack of 5, which is decent for a phalanx unit. Melee attack of 7. Morale of 6, which is not brilliant. But they are a solid, 
decent unit that can, you know, form the backbone of your army. Now, coming over here, we have the Armenian Legionaries, which are basically just a little bit better than Princapes. They have a morale of 8, melee attack of 7, two, uh, 1 peeler, which has a missile attack of 11, and 16 total defense. So what you really want to be doing is getting to a point where these Legionaries can make a large portion of your infantry battle, uh, infantry line. However, of course, we have something else that you would want to fill your armies with. Now, we go on to the missile troops. They have standard archers, just the standard archer, not very good. Just, uh, you know, pretty, pretty average archer. Pretty much the same stats as most other weak basic archer units. Low defense, so they will get killed by other archers very easily. But a missile attack of 7 and 30 missiles. And, of course, some javelin men who also are pretty trash. And, of course, they have onagers. Ready to go. So you do get a siege battalion in, uh, in with Armenia, which allows you to break down walls a lot quicker. But now we come to the real strength of the Armenian army. And of course, they have some Arab cavalry and Bedouin warriors. I would not recommend getting these guys. They are pretty much exactly the same stats. Four morale, seven melee with four charge. Um, the Bedouin warriors are even worse because they ride camels and camels in this game are extremely, extremely slow. So go with the Arab cavalry if you want to get a fast moving sort of irregular cavalry unit. But I would recommend not using these guys. They are pretty trash. Now, of course, we have the real strength in the Armenian cavalry, and that comes with the cataphracts. Now, in this position, you could have also looked at Pontus. Um, and Parthia, but as I say, they don't have the same infantry options, so the well-roundedness of this faction is definitely a lot better. Um, however, there's one thing that sets these guys apart from Parthia and Pontus, but these cataphracts are the standard cataphracts. Very, 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 very strong. They even have an armor-piercing secondary weapon, so if you leave these guys in the fight for a while, which they can do, and they can tank with that huge huge defense of 23 um, they will be armor piercing so if you want to fight urban cohorts with these guys one-on-one -on -one, they should win they should do very well and now we get to where the real strength of this army lies so this is the only horse archer faction we uh, we're having in this list so far guys and of course as i've spoke about this unit is the most op campaign unit in the game the standard horse archer this unit is fantastic and what you should really be doing is just filling your armies full of these guys. Don't worry about infantry. Don't worry about all that. I know we're talking about well-roundedness in a faction. But these guys are absolute beasts, guys. Bedouin archers, trash. They're pretty much the horse archers, but, you know, uh, on camels. So they're slower. So do not use them. But the cataphract archers. This is the reason why Armenia comes in at number five, guys. Guys, the only nation that gets cataphract archers. The one thing that they don't have is speed, but what they make up for in speed, they make up for in defense. What they lack in speed, they make up for in a huge defense of 22, 18 armor, 4 defense skill, missile attack of 7, and a great melee attack. So basically, once these guys have run out of ammo, you can charge them in with pretty similar stats to the cataphracts. If we look at that, they pretty much have very close stats to the cataphracts. When it comes to uh, their melee, melee, um, their melee attack, which is amazing. So these guys are one of the most OP, strongest units in the whole game, and that is why Armenia comes in at number five. Now, of course, let's look at the general. You start out with the Eastern General, which is a very strong general unit. It throws uh, six javelins with a missile attack of twelve before they charge, which is fantastic, especially. Um, against rival generals because generally those javelins will do some serious damage and then you get the armored eastern general which i would say is probably the strongest um, general in the game so your generals are fantastic as well so overall pretty well rounded pretty decent but the reason why the number in number five is because they get this one unit this cataphract archer guys which is an unbelievable unit long range missiles very good morale very well armored and they can smash people in melee as well so when you get this unit you will be running over people for fun guys for fun so that is why 
we bring the Armenians in at number five on the unit roster, guys. So, guys, here we are at number four, and of course, it is Egypt. Although not very historically accurate, these guys do have a very decent unit roster with a pretty decent infantry backbone, good archers, decent mid-level cavalry, and some great morale shock options. So that is why they come in at number four, guys. So let's start out with the trash once again. Of course, the peasants. Then they have the Nubian Spearmen, which can do phalanx, but their morale is two. They are pretty trash. I would say they're better than the um, Eastern Infantry, but hmm, compared to the Hillmen, I'm not sure I'd take these guys over the Hillmen just because of that defensive eight and melee attack of five. I think they're pretty much a little bit better, uh, but a, li a little bit worse, probably because of that morale of two. These guys, again, will just rout at the sound of their friends whistling. They will not be good, and you do not want to create your backbone with these guys. What you want to do instead, guys, is come over here and create your backbone out of either the Nile Spearmen or the Desert Infantry. Now, the Desert Axemen. I would choose the Desert Axemen because the Nile Spearmen have a morale of 4, melee attack of 7, but a decent defense of 13. So these guys, as long as their morale stays pretty reasonable, can hold the line pretty decently, especially against cavalry. And they do have a combat bonus in deserts, which of course means that they will be good in all your starting regions. But as I say, guys, I would choose the Desert Axemen apart from the Nile Spearmen for anti-cavalry uh, options. The Desert Axemen are actually a pretty decent sword and board unit with a morale of 8, which is a lot better than all the previous units, a melee attack of 10, and a total defense of 10 as well. So although they won't hold the line maybe as long as these guys, as long as the Nile Spearmen, they will do a lot more damage, and they are a lot more maneuverable, guys. A lot more maneuverable. One thing to look out for, they only have a 5 defense against arrows. So for most starting arch units, we'll be able to pick these guys off for fun. So do watch out for that. But, as I say, a pretty decent sword and board unit. Um, and they should start making the backbone of your infantry early game very quickly. Now, when you get to late game, what you want to be doing is... Getting rid of all those Desert Axemen and going straight for these Pharaoh's Guard. They are amazing, guys. One of the best Phalanx units in the game with a total defense of 16. A melee attack of 12, which is very, very high for a Phalanx unit. A morale of 10 and an alt attack of 8, which is also very high for a... Um, for a phalanx unit so when you when you can guys get these guys in the action as soon as possible and hold the line ready for your cavalry to strike them in the rear now let's look at their missile options of course they have some slingers slingers in this game are pretty trash so ignore these guys they have some skirmishers which are just some javelin units trash as well but of course they have normal bowmen which have pretty much the standard uh, standard uh, stats for Bowman, 4 morale, 7 missile attack, and only 2 defense, which is defense skill. So these guys will die instantly if, if an arrow hits them, guys. But their real strength comes with these Pharaoh's Bowman, an excellent, excellent bow unit. Uh, total defense of 12, 7 of which is armor. A missile attack of 10, which is a very good starting missile attack. A fantastic starting missile attack, in fact. With a melee attack of 9 and morale of 10. These guys will not rout. They do for some reason only have 29 arrows each rather than 30. Which is kind of weird. Because most people normally have 30. But they are a very decent bow unit. One thing to note is these guys are actually your second strongest infantry melee unit. So if you use all the ammo, ammo with these guys, don't be afraid to get them into the melee. The Pharaoh's Guards are, of course, of course, a lot better in melee than these guys. But these guys are actually better than the Desert Axemen in melee. So as soon as you can get these guys, maybe get more than you think you need. Because you can use them in melee very well. The one thing they don't have is a shield, but that is fine. Now, of course, you get access to Onagers and Heavy Onagers, so you have a decent siege option as well. Now, let's talk about the cavalry, starting with the melee or the um, sort of trash of cavalry. They do have some Bedouin camel archers, so they get the horse archer option, but camel archers, as I say, they're still a decent unit if you don't have access to horse archers. 
but they're so slow. Camels in this game are so unbelievably slow that I would still not recommend using these guys, really. Um, but yes, then they have the Desert Cavalry. Not a very good cavalry unit. 4 morale, 6 melee attack, 11 defense, which is decent, and a charge of 5. So they can swoop in and do some good damage in the rear of troops. But you do not want to be charging them into dense, packed formations of troops or spearmen early on at all. The Nubian Cavalry, however, are actually a pretty decent early game cavalry unit. And they are fast moving. Their defense is quite low with 10, but they have no armor. So you want to get that armor stat up as quick as possible. But a 4 shield, a 6 defense skill, and a 6 charge with a melee attack of 8 and a 9 alt attack. So these guys are actually really decent in melee. Uh, they just don't have any armor. So you want to get these guys into the fight, charging as soon as possible. Do not let them get shot by arrows because they will die. And then your third option is the Nile Cavalry. Basically an upgraded armoured version of the Nubian Cavalry. Uh, they aren't fast moving however. So that is kind of a little detriment to them. But they are a pretty decent mid-level cavalry option. Now you don't get any very elite cavalry with Egyptians. So please do note that. However that is because you come with some of the strongest OP units on field battles. <laughs> as your secondary sort of cavalry option. And you come with the Egyptian char uh, Chariot Archers. We have 60, uh, 60 missiles each, guys. But that is because they have two people on the, on the back of each chariot. So they each shoot 30. So, yeah, charge of 5, uh, melee attack of 9, a missile attack of 9, which is very decent, and a good morale of 7. Terrible, terrible defense, but two hit points. Of course, you would probably not recommend taking these guys because you, what you want to do is go and take these Egyptian chariots with a melee, melee attack of 12, charge of 6, morale of 7, and 3 hit points. These guys will be damaging the enemy, enemy morale like no tomorrow. I'd probably say the only unit that can do more damage to enemy morale is elephants. These guys are so strong at breaking the enemy that if you fix them with your fix the enemy with your pharaoh's guards and charge these guys in the back you will have a mass route on your hands in no time absolutely no time they shred nearly everything guys especially with their special attack so these guys are the reason why egypt is in number four of course because these guys can just destroy armies with their morale shock so that is why they sit at number four now their generals you can get the chariot general or the Horse General. Both are pretty decent. Not quite as good as the Armoured Eastern General, I would say, the, these generals. But the Chariot General, of course, is very good with five hit points. So if you have a faction leader with these guys, you will be doing some serious damage. Serious, serious damage. So they are a very, very good unit. On top of that, they have 60 ammo again. So they fire their... Uh, they fire... Um, arrows at the enemy as well as charging in with the same attack as the egyptian chariots which is crazy and they have better morale so these guys are very very strong guys one of the strongest um, one of the strongest um generals in the whole game so because of that because of those strong morale shock options with the chariots as well as a decent you know Decent backbone of infantry with very strong phalanx units if you want. Uh, these guys come in at number four. Now in at number three, guys, we have a slightly different army coming from the north lands of Germania. And these guys have an extremely, extremely strong unit roster, guys. Very, very strong Based upon morale shock. Very like Egypt in terms of that. Egypt, you know, strength comes from morale shock with the chariots. These guys come from morale shock with their infantry. Now, they have probably a slightly better rounded roster than I would say Egypt has. So, that's why they come in at number three, guys. Now, they are the only barbarian faction on this list. Um, and that is for very good reason. They have the best barbarian um, roster by far so let's look at their trash units to start with of course they have the normal peasants they have a spear warband which early game is something that you 
uh, will be able to recruit a lot rather than some of the better units. But as it goes, as a backbone unit, they're not too bad. They just have a bit of poor morale, which is, you know, something that the Barbarian factions suffer with a lot is poor morale. Morale of only 4, but a melee attack of 9 and a total defense of 11 with an alt attack of 7 is very good for sort of a starting game base spear unit. And on top of that, they can form phalanx, which has a much better animation than the standard spear unit. So these guys are one of the best sort of starting spear units in the game that you can almost recruit anywhere. So they are very good starting game early game trash units and they really shouldn't even be in this trash tier because they're actually pretty decent as a starting game unit now your infantry backbone comes from your axemen and your naked fanatics now of course the naked fanatics once again are a morale shock sort of unit they look amazing in remastered by the way with all these designs look at this guy pointing at the enemy ready to go Total defense of 7, which mainly comes from their shield. They don't even have a good defense skill. But a morale of 10 and a melee attack of 13. A melee attack of 13 is very, very strong. Very strong, guys, uh, for an early game sort of unit. You get these from a temple, I believe. And the Axeman with an 8 morale, melee attack of 11, total defense of 9. So they're slightly... You know, worse morale and worse melee attack, but better defense than the naked fanatics. So I would probably choose these guys to make up the backbone of your army uh, if you choose so. Uh, but they are, yeah, they are a very uh, decent sort of backbone unit for your army. Pretty nicely spread stats in their defense as well. So uh, it's going to be hard for them to be either killed by arrows and by others. So a decent heavy infantry unit there. Now, let's talk about maybe the unique units first. So you have the Screeching Women, which have 10 morale, which is very good. And a melee attack of 11, which is also very good, but very poor defense. And that is because they are simply there to boost the morale of your troops, guys. Or dismay the morale of the enemy troops, sorry, should I say. So what you want to do is get these guys close to the action and start their screaming and then send in your morale shock units that we're going to talk about in a bit. And they also get Warhounds, one of the unique units, um, sort of uh, outside of the realm of infantry cavalry uh, units, should I say. Uh, which these uh, Warhounds are actually one of the best ones in the game. Them and Scythia, I believe, get the two best Warhounds in the game. So they're a decent Warhound. I don't really tend to use these guys all that much. The one decent thing you can say, though, is that if you don't lose any of the uh, actual units in this, all the dogs will replenish, so you can use them as a disposable unit. Now, in terms of their missile options, they only get two, so not a huge amount in the missile department. The skirmishers, which are basically the peltas, the javelin men, trash as usual. But the chosen archer warband is actually fantastic. A missile attack of eight, long-range missiles, good morale, 10 defense with 7 armor, which is very decent for an archer unit. Almost as good as the Pharaoh's um, Bowman that we talked about earlier. Very, very decent. Um, and, of course, 8 morale as well. And 10 melee attack. So, a decent in me melee as well. So, very similar to the Pharaoh's Guard that we talked about in... The Pharaoh's Bowman that we talked about in the uh, Egypt uh, number 4 round. And, yes, they are a very, very good archer unit. So, although you get limited options, your chosen archer warband is very decent. Now, let's talk about the bread and butter. The real strength of this... Um, of this roster and it comes in the morale shock units let's talk about the night raiders first they are a fantastic unit 10 morale 10 defense 14 melee attack so not a huge amount of defense which is with a six charge which is awesome for an infantry unit um, so not a huge amount of defense but that is the same across nearly all your units you don't have a huge amount of defense but what you do have is very very good attacking power 14 melee attack Outside of Roman units is nearly unheard of. It is very, very decent for an infantry unit. Incredibly decent. And look at all these straights, guys. Combat bonus in woods or snow. Frighten the nearby enemy. So if you get your screeching women nearby and these guys in the fight, um, they will absolutely shred the enemy morale. They have good morale, good stamina, and they are fast moving, which as an infantry unit means they can run very quickly. 
towards the enemy. And you should use these guys to ambush troops as much as possible. Now let's talk about their chosen axemen. Now these guys are absolute beasts, guys. They don't have any armor or shield. A defense skill of 6, so they will fall to arrows very quickly, so do watch out for that. They have a morale of 12, and a melee attack of 18, which is also armor-piercing, guys. These are one of the strongest shock units in the game. They will destroy the enemy morale. They have excellent morale. They're effective against armor, expert at hiding in woods, and the Warcry improves their attack even more, guys. Even more. So these guys can have... Uh, even better attack but that melee attack of 18 i believe that is the strongest melee attack of any infantry unit outside of the roman factions but i could be wrong i'm pretty sure it is though because these guys are absolute beasts in melee just watch out for the archers though guys because they will fall to archers very quickly so of course chosen axeman an amazing amazing unit but now we come to the real the real amazing unit these beasts the Berserkers, morale of 16, they will not break, guys. Melee of 19, and of course, you can get them to have Bloodlust uh, with a total defense of 7, a charge of 7, one of the best charges for an infantry unit in the game. If not the best, I believe it's probably the best. Defense skill of 5, and they do have 2 armor, which isn't great, but, you know, better armor than, say, the Axemen. But yes, these guys will destroy enemy morale like there's no tomorrow. Frighten nearby enemy uh, infantry. They have two hit points as well. So that defense is really 14. So what you're looking at here is a 14, 19 melee infantry unit that frightens nearby infantry. So they are one of the strongest shock units in the game. And if you get these guys into the battle in Bloodlust, they will shred the enemy morale and hopefully make them run for the hills before they even know what's hit them. Look at them. They are beasts, guys. This unit is amazing. That combined with the Axemen and Night Raiders, you have a very strong elite infantry force. And you should be recruiting as many of these guys as you can early game. So get those temples built up so that you can get them. Now let's talk about the cavalry. Of course they have barbarian cavalry which are pretty trash. Uh, 4, 8, 10. Not brilliant. Just a decent, you know, uh, unit for either charging into the back of the enemy or charging down routing units. Of course, they're fast moving, which helps. But their next units of cavalry are pretty decent. Cavalry. Barbarian Noble Cavalry, 8, 9, 15 is a very decent, with 7 charge, very decent mid-level cavalry unit stats. So these guys are pretty strong, guys. And one of the only sort of units you get with armor. Um, so you will do well to get these guys into the fight. Now, of course, here is the real, the real jewel in the crown of your cavalry. The Gothic Cavalry with a morale of 12, a melee attack of 12, a charge of 7, and a total defense of 19. If we compare, compare that to Legionary Cavalry, they have a melee attack of 11 and a defense of 22. So slightly worse um, at attack than these Gothic Cavalry, but better defense. But of course, the Gothic Cavalry, you know, the Roman, we can't really compare to the Roman units because the Roman units are just better than every single other unit in the game. Um, so, you know, unit roster in the game. So these guys are one of the best cavalry units outside of the Roman units and by far one of the best barbarian cavalry units they, they have. They are a fantastic elite cavalry, heavy cavalry unit. It, absolutely fantastic. Now let's look at the generals, the barbarian chosen warlord and the barbarian warlord it's pretty average warlord as it goes 12 12 13 and the chosen warlord 12 12 16 so they are not as good as the eastern um the eastern warlords the eastern generals but they are okay you know they're not going to stand up to the fight against romans um or against uh, eastern eastern generals but they will shred barbarian generals very nicely um but as i say guys the reason why Germania is in number three, very, very well-rounded um, sort of faction in terms of the variety of troops you have. But apart from that, the kind of caveat to that is it's well-rounded if you want to go for shock. You need to go for shock with these guys. Don't be defensive. Don't think that your spear warband are going to hold the line forever. Get these guys into the back and flanks of your enemy and you will destroy their morale and break enemy armies like no tomorrow. I promise you. Especially if you they either don't have a general or you kill their general early on. 
So as I say, Germania, very, very strong unit roster. Nicely rounded, very, very pushing towards shock and low armor. But that is an advantage if you know how to use these guys properly. So that is why the Germans come in at number three. So here we have number two, guys. And again, it's a slightly rogue choice, but we're going with Carthage. A very, very well-rounded faction in terms of what it has. The only thing that it doesn't have in abundance is good uh, missile options. But they do have a slightly better upgraded version of the Slingers. So they do have a little bit of something there if you want it. So let's look at their trash units to start with. And of course, you can see in the back the reason why they are so highly rated um, in this, uh, in this <laughs> uh, unit roster video. So of course, we have the peasants and we have the town militia. Both absolute trash, guys. Do not recruit these. And we have the Iberian infantry, which again, I would say is probably pretty low tier infantry, if not trash tier, with a morale of six. Melee attack of 7, defense of 9. So they will not hold a candle up to the Hastati guys. I believe Hastati have a morale of 6 as well. Um, a melee attack of 7, but better defense. You know, Prinkapes have uh, around 16 defense, I believe. So, you know, Prinkapes will just be shredding these guys for fun. Um, so you don't want to use these guys too much against the Romans. But you should be able to destroy the Romans early game with your other options that you might have available to you. But the one good thing is that these guys, the Carthaginians, have a pretty decent rounded unit of uh, spearmen available to them. The Libyan spearmen, 6, 7, 16, uh, which is a very decent early game score for the Libyan spearmen. They're well armored, 7 armor, defense skill of 4, and shield of 5. So pretty well spread out our, uh, defense stats, which means that they're hard to kill depending on what's attacking them. Um, morale of 6 again is not brilliant but it is on par with the Hastati and Prinkapes uh, but melee, melee attack of 7 and total defense of 16 the one thing that they don't have on the Hastati or Prinkapes is the fact that they can't throw a javelin into the oh we uh, we should pause <laughs> we won the battle by them uh, them charging away <laughs> I do have a Roman Julii peasants as the <laughs> his opponent in this game but oh well um, and we, we've already won. We didn't need to do anything. But yeah, of course, we have the Libyan Spearmen, which are a pretty decent, steadfast spear unit. But the Poeni, I don't know how to say it, Pony, Poeni, Poeni uh, Infantry is a very decent, steadfast spear unit, guys. And they can form phalanx. Of course, they don't have the long spears. So against, you know, other phalanx units, they might not do so well. But they are very, very, very good against cavalry. Because of that phalanx formation and a defense of 18. Six defense skill, which is very good. So they should do well in melee. A melee attack of nine, which again is very strong for a phalanx unit. Alt attack of five. So you don't really want to get these guys out of phalanx formation to charge anyone with only a charge of four. But yes, they are a good, very decent unit. And you want to sort of create the backbone of your armies with those guys until you can get something like the Sacred Band. And of course, you have the Spanish mercenaries, which are okay. Are okay. They're pretty much, you know, a Hastati unit um, with a couple of peeler and some melee attack and defense. But they're not good as, as good as Hastati with a morale of four. I think the Hastati have a morale of six. Um, so these guys, you know, not that brilliant. I would much rather take some Poini infantry over them. Now, before we get on to the, um, you know, archers, let's look at our elite infantry, the Sacred Band. These guys are fantastic, guys. A brilliant, brilliant phalanx unit. They don't have very long spears, uh, but they are very well armored. They have good stamina and good morale. 10 morale, melee attack of 12, which is excellent for a phalanx unit. And a total defense of 23, which is pretty nicely spread out. 7 defense skill, 5 shield, and 11 armor. A fantastic, fantastic phalanx unit, guys. Um, and you want to use these guys as soon as you can recruit these guys, which shouldn't be too long because you have Carthage as a minor city to start with. 
get them training. They are brilliant. They are one of the best phalanx units in the game. They are fantastic. And they, um, you know, kind of bring up, you know, your infantry options with the Puinis is pretty decent. Libyan Spearmen are okay. They're steadfast. They're good at defense, but not great at killing. So these guys are really what you want to make your armies out of as soon as you can. They will shred enemy armies. The one issue is, of course, all phalanx units suffer with a lack of maneuverability. Uh, but, you know, they are very, very good phalanx unit at a phalanx unit. And, of course, here with your missiles, you don't have archers. So that is one issue that the Carthaginians suffer with. No archers. They have some trash peltasts, of course. And slingers, which, as I say, are absolutely trash. The reason why slingers are trash in this game is look at that range. It is awful. You pretty much need to be in the face of the enemy before you can even fire. And by that time, they've already charged you. So slingers are not that useful. They do have an upgraded version of the slingers, however, with a total defense of 6 compared to 4, a decent melee attack of 6, a missile attack of 9 compared to 4, and a morale of 8 compared to 4. So they are just a much, much better slinger unit. I believe you can only train these guys in Palma and maybe Cordoba and maybe Spain. Um, so you want to uh, train them and send them to the front if you do want to use them. But as I say, you know, missile units in Rome aren't the be-all and end-all on foot. I mean, cavalry missile units are OP as hell. But cav uh, missile units on foot are not brilliant. Just because, you know, the battles in this game go pretty quickly. So you don't really get chance to skirmish the enemy that much unless they're really, really being defensive. And the AI will charge you after a certain while of being defensive if you do pepper them with um, pepper them with uh, with arrows and missiles so let's look at their cavalry and they have decent decent cavalry options as Carthage you have the round shield cavalry of four seven ten not the best two armor only but four defense skill and four shield so they do do all right in melee but you've got to be watch out for these guys routing because if they get surrounded or you know an um, an enemy unit that frightens them they will run away very quickly. Uh, so these guys are only really good for chasing down routing enemies or charging into the back of a formation already in melee. Now, of course, you have the long shield cavalry, which are just a much better version of the round shield cavalry with a charge of six, a total defense of 13, a melee attack of eight and an alt attack of nine with a morale of eight as well, which is a lot, lot better. They are a massive upgrade from these round shield cavalry. But again, they will destroy Equites, but they're not going to destroy, you know, sort of later game Roman cavalry units. But as I say, as Carthage, you should destroy Rome very early on, very quickly before they manage to get to the Marian reforms. Um, and I would recommend that course of action over anything else. Because once they're gone, you know, these units are pretty decent. Um, pretty decent against other cavalry uh, cavalry units uh, in the surrounding factions of Carthage. You know they're gonna. You know Spain has, I believe, long shield cavalry as well. So you're gonna be matched with them. Uh, Namidia has trash cavalry. You'll do well against them. So yeah, you know these are a pretty much decent cavalry unit, mid tier cavalry unit. They're not elite, but that is because you come in with the sacred band cavalry, which are an amazing, amazing cavalry unit, guys. Total defense of 18, uh, a morale of 10, melee attack of 12, and an alt attack of 12. Sorry, melee attack of 11, alt attack of 12, with a charge of 6, defense skill of 7, and 11 armor. Very, very, very strong cavalry unit, guys. As I say, the legionary uh, cavalry has an 11 melee attack and 22 defense, so they are a little bit worse than the legionary cavalry. However, you can probably boost that up with your armor upgrades. And on top of that, you know, you should beat the Romans before they get legionary cavalry. So you shouldn't really be too worried about fighting them. But in terms of fighting other people early game, these guys are going to shred them. So get them as early as you can. As early as you can. The same with the sacred band. Both the sacred band cavalry and the sacred band are amazing. But we have the real reason why we are here with this faction guys and why it is at number two they get the three elephant options they get the elephants with 10 hit points so that defense guys is really 120 think about that that defense is 120 morale of eight melee attack of five which is not brilliant but their special attack 
will do some really, really good damage. They're also bonus against cavalry. So if you run them into the enemy general, they'll probably shred the enemy general pretty nicely. Um, of course, you've got to watch out for them running amok. But, you know, if you're the player, you should have a decent time of that and not really get them to run amok very often. Now, the war elephants, of course, they can fire arrows from the back. But 12 hit points, which is even more hit points, with 16 defense, which is crazy. Armor of 13, 3 defense skill, charge of 8, which is massive. All of these guys have a charge of 8, I believe. Um, and, of course, you know, they fire arrows from the back as well, which... You know, they're not going to be making too many kills with the arrows, but they are so strong. And of course, we get the Armoured Elephants, which is amazing, guys. These are one of the most OP units in the game. Ridiculous, ridiculously strong. Morale of 8, which isn't amazing, so you've got to watch out. They might rout at some points, guys. Uh, melee attack of 6, missile attack of 6, which doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, total defense of 19, which means with their 12 hit points, they really have a total defense of 228, 228 guys. That is crazy. A charge of eight as well. So if you charge them into the enemy, they will just shred them. As long as they're not charging directly into a phalanx formation, you will shred nearly every infantry unit in the game with these boys and they will not die very quickly at all. That is crazy. They are one of the most OP units in the game. And of course, they frighten nearby, uh, nearby enemies and make them run away. Now, what sort of generals do you have? You have the general's bodyguard, which has a 10, 11 and a 14 defense. So a bit better than, say, the barbarian one. Uh, and the armoured bodyguard, 10, 11, 12 and 18. It's not quite as good as the Roman generals or the Eastern generals, but a pretty decent general. I'm pretty sure it's on par with the Greek generals. Uh, they are the Greek generals, I think. So yes, very decent generals, uh, but not quite as good as the Roman armoured generals or the, um, or the Eastern generals, as I say. But the real reason why Carthage comes in at number two, guys, is they have a pretty decent selection of infantry, good backbone spearmen, um, with very strong elites if you want to take them. Decent cavalry, mid-level and elite, but some of the most OP shock units in the game that will shred the enemy as well as just shredding the morale. So like with Germania last time around for number three, you know, those berserkers... Those Axemen, they have to do a lot of work to kill the enemy. Whereas if you charge these elephants through a unit, they will just shred it. They will just kill so many of their units that it's ridiculous. You know, you don't need to, you know, you don't need them to lose any troops for them to kill a lot. You don't need them to be in the thick of the battle. You just need them to charge through a unit and they will do for you. So that is why Carthage, of course, comes in at number two. So, coming in at number one, guys, the best non-Roman unit roster we've all been waiting for is, of course, the Seleucids. They have the best non-Roman unit roster, and, you know, some could argue that they have a unit roster that might even be better than some of the Roman factions, than the Roman factions themselves with their variety. People kind of seem to overbear on infantry a lot of the times when it comes to unit roster. But these Seleucids genuinely have something of everything. The only thing they don't really have is a low armor shock unit um, or a really decent archer. But apart from that, they have pretty much every other OP unit you can get apart from a horse archer. They have everything, guys. So let's look at their trash units that they start with. Of course, you have the peasants. But you have the Militia Hoplites as well. These guys are awful. Two morale, five melee attack, eight defense. Now, you can use these guys to defend cities pretty okay. You know, if you put them in the town square, they're not going to rout, so that morale doesn't matter. Defense of eight and melee of five. And it's very hard for anyone to break through that phalanx. But as I say, they are trash guys. In field battles... These guys will run if they hear the sound of the enemy boots on rock. Like, they are trash. The same, it goes for the Levy Pikemen. They just have, they have worse defense than the Militia Hoplites. Better attack. Um, 
But yeah, they they just have very long spears. They're basically missile militia hoplites with long spears. Uh, so I would not recommend recruiting these guys either. They're pretty trash. But why does this, you know, nation come in with the big guns as being the number one? Now, of course, they have the phalanx pikemen. Better morale, four morale, melee attack of eight, which is decent for a phalanx unit, and defense of 13, which is pretty nicely spread. Uh, alt attack of five, but of course, they have very long spears, so the other phalanxes won't be able to get through them. They have a very good bonus versus cavalry. They're an okay unit, guys. An okay sort of entry-level phalanx unit. But, of course, the Silver Shield Pikemen, on the other hand, are a very decent unit that you want to be sort of using to create the backbone of your armies from very early on. Defense skill of 6, a total defense of 14, which is decent outside of an elite phalanx unit. That is a very decent defense. A melee attack of 10, which in a phalanx is excellent, absolutely excellent. And a morale of 8, so these guys should not rout. And they should, um, you know, form the backbone of any good Seleucid army. They are a very good backbone unit that you want to use as early as possible. Now, on top of that, they come with Silver Shield Legionnaires with a morale of 8, melee attack of 9, and a total defense of 22. And outside of the Romans, they are the best sort of Legionnaires in the game. Missile attack of 13 with one peeler. Um, so they are very, very, very good unit against everyone but basically the Romans. Um, they are basically a legionary cohort. A legionary cohort has a 10 morale, a 9 attack, and 22 defense. So a legionary cohort just has 2 more morale than these guys, and that's it. These guys are pretty much a legionary cohort. And you can fill your army with them when you get them if you want. They are very, very good, especially against non-Roman factions, which you'll be predominantly fighting early on. So get these guys into your army as, as soon as possible. Very decent, very elite. Now let's look at the, um, you know, missile options they have. Peltasts, mm, trash as usual. And they just have normal archers, which aren't brilliant. But at least it gives you an archer option as opposed to Carthage that has only slingers. And archers are definitely a lot better than slingers. But as I say, you don't really want to be using these guys too much. Probably in defensive cities more than in field battles. Because when they don't have long range, their range again is also quite trash. It's not brilliant. And of course, these guys, they have Onagers, which are a fantastic uh, siege option if you want. There is the only siege op option, however. So do bear that in mind. They don't have a great amount of siege options. But outside of the Romans, not many places have good siege options. Now let's look at the cavalry. Go for the Militia Cavalry. Trash unit, guys. Not brilliant. Total defense of 6, which is not good for a cavalry unit. Melee attack of 6, which is okay. Morale of 4. And they have Javelins. If you want to use these guys to skirmish with some of their um, you know, units, especially their generals, do so. But I wouldn't really recommend using them. You get the Greek Cavalry, which is a 4, 6, 8. Not the best cavalry unit, but they are fast moving. These guys are good. They do have a decent uh, charge of 5. But these guys are good for chasing down enemy units or destroying formations in the back. But of course, we have the two elite options of the Seleucids, which are both amazing, guys. Both really, really, really good. Look at this. You have both the Companion Cavalry and the cataphract options. So the companion cavalry come with a morale of 10. A melee attack of 10. With an alt attack of 12. Which is fantastic stats to start with. Defense of 17. Amazing, amazing stats. Um, compared to the legionary cavalry. With 11 attack and 22 defense. They're not quite as good. But of course with that alt attack. They have a better attack than them. Uh, but they have very good defense. But a charge guys of 9. That is amazing. They will be shredding people in the charge. Absolutely ruining them in the charge. So these guys have a very, very, very good charge. And you want to use that to your advantage. Now if we look at the cataphracts, they also have a charge of 9. With a total defense of 23. Melee attack of 7 and an alt attack of 8. Which is armor piercing of course. So you get the two very, very overpowered cavalry options as your elite options. They are fantastic. Now, on top of this, guys, let's look at the real, the real elite options that you get available to you as the Seleucids. And it's kind of crazy. 
that you get companion cavalry, cataphracts, chariots, and all the elephants. It's absolutely crazy, really, to think that you get that. But of course, you get the scythe chariots, melee attack of 15, charge of 7, morale of 8, but a defense of 1. But with 4 hit points, their defense is really, really 4, which is still not brilliant. But if you can get the armor up, say to 4, and say to 3, you will have 4 defense, which means that their defense is really 12. But these guys, of course, are only really there to sort of shred enemy infantry morale. Do not leave them in the fight too long because with that defense, they won't last too long. But they will rout enemy units for fun, guys. Rout them for fun. So you get the chariot option as well as that excellent cavalry. And of course, as we looked at last time, you get the amazing elephant options that will once again shred enemy units, shred their morale, and destroy enemy armies just for fun. These guys are beasts, and I can't reiterate that enough. They are so overpowered, it's ridiculous. So that combined really means that Seleucids have an absolutely redonkulous unit roster for a non-Roman faction. Now the generals, of course, you have the generals bodyguard and you have the generals armed bodyguard. I'm pretty sure these are the Greek ones and the same ones that we looked at and uh, with the uh, Carthaginians. So decent general bodyguard units, uh, not quite as good as the Easterns or the Romans, but they are very decent. Probably the third level of generals bodyguard. But as I say, guys, the Seleucids, ridiculous, ridiculous unit roster. Strong, decent mid-level infantry with very good elites, as well as extremely strong and overpowered elite cavalry options, with a very decent morale shock option in the chariots, and a ridiculously broken, overpowered morale shock and, <laughs> and unit killer option in the elephants. You have pretty much something of everything, guys, with these guys. So that is why they come in at number one. That is it, guys. So what did you think of my ratings, my ranking? Please do comment down below. Of course, I have other videos out there at Total War Guides, like my top five easiest, top five hardest factions um, in Total War uh, Rome Remastered to start. My faction ranking video for ranking all the factions. Please do check that out. That would be amazing. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you again in the next video.